My good practice was already uh, running before it because I'm a strong believer of universal design for many years. So when I was teaching, I can give you some examples of things that I did um, when I was teaching. Um, I give, I, I really um, emphasize universal design in teaching, but also in evaluating. And sometimes you see that it's only in teaching or only in evaluating, but I really like to do it in both. First of all, I explain to my students that I'm working universal design because if I don't explain it, they will get some stress from making these choices because I'm telling them I'm going to work universal design, which means that you as a student, you take control of your learning process. I'm going to make sure that every material is accessible, that you can uh, express what you have learned in the way that you want to. But you have to, of course, uh, understand why we are doing this. So I explain to them what universal design is and how I am going to use it in my, um, in my teaching practice. So that's the first step that I always do. Then I make sure that I work universal design in my learning. So when I teach a course, I make sure I have uh, like a learning module on my Blackboard. So students who want, who want to work uh, on their own, they can do everything on their own. And there is always an option to read, to listen, or to uh, look at. So there is a movie, there is a book or an article, and there is a podcast that they can just listen. Next to the fact that there will be a course given at the university. I will be there and I will teach it. So there are students who follow the self-paced module with all the... Um, with all the materials there in different uh, settings. Then there are the students who come to my lecture. And then there are the students who use the module and just listen to the recording, for example, or every other kind of uh, choice that they make. They can do everything. They can read, look at it, and also listen to the podcast and come to my college. Everything is possible. Then after all my courses have been given, then the evaluation is there. And then I really want them to make a choice. How are you going to show me what you've learned? And there are different options. They can choose to have a written exam or an oral exam. Of course, uh, because of uh, planning issues, they have to decide before uh, the end of December, is it going to be written or is it going to be oral? Um, and then they just fill in the form. For the people who choose a written exam, they can come to the written exam. The oral exam can come to the oral exam. And sometimes I leave the option, if it is possible for the course, to choose another way. And sometimes students do choose another way. Like, for example, they want to make a vlog, a blog, their own podcast or something like that. But this is not always possible due to uh, university restrictions. So they already have the option written or oral. Um, and then I can see some students choose the option that they know best, the written form, because they have been using written forms for like the past 12 years. And some of them choose the oral option because they know from their, for themselves, I'm better at talking to my professor than I am writing it down. So that's, uh, what, that's what I do right now. That's my good practice. And that's how it's working for many years now and also at the university. Why is it important to talk about your students about universal design? If you don't do it, they don't know if they have to choose. Do I have to use the online materials? Am I a book reader? Am I an article reader? Do I have to look at the movies? Do I have to come to the colleges? Am I going to choose something written or orally? If you don't talk to them about them, it gives them a lot of um, choice stress. Um, so these, this first step is really, really important. And then you can just go about your teaching in the universal design fashion and then evaluation. And my golden tip for everyone who wants to start designing their courses, universal design, do one module at per year. You cannot make them all universal design in one year because it's going to cost you a lot of effort, a lot of time. No, just do one per year and then after a few years, everything will be universal design. So, and then your students can grow into it with you. That's also a very important thing. And then it will pay it forward, uh, I guess. So that was my good practice.